Well, morning everybody. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a service. So I'm going to change the oil, change the fuel filter, put a new air filter in it. 7,142 miles since the last time that I did these jobs, which isn't enough really. I should be doing this in another 1,000 miles. 8 to 12,000 would be normal. I've just got a bit of time on my hands and I've got the parts in, so I uh, thought I might as well bang it out, especially if we get a uh, kind of another cold snap in this winter of ours. So uh, that's what I'm up to. But I've got this, this really funky little gadget that supposedly makes the worst job in the uh, kind of vehicle maintenance uh, calendar a lot more bearable. So when it comes to oil changes, they're, they're historically quite messy. I've got this little 12-volt um, uh, pump that is supposed to drain out the old engine oil and uh, it's supposed to make it a lot cleaner, a lot more straightforward, so we're going to give that a whirl. Started. I think we've got another big cold snap coming. I'm going to take this opportunity, just because I've got a bit of time on my hands, to give the car a service. I'm going to uh, change the oil, oil filter, fuel filter, air filter. That's probably all I'm going to do today. I have got some new brakes in that I ordered online that were uh, pretty cheap. So what I tend to do is to keep my eyes open for Discovery One parts that maybe people are clearing off the shelf or there's a bit of a discount on. And I buy them up, I put them in the uh, uh, smallest workshop in the world. And when I get a bit of time on my hands, I get out and change them. So today, um, my plan is to do those jobs. I've got this funky little uh, gadget, so uh, I'm gonna bring you a bit closer and I'll show you that. Hopefully, it's gonna make our oil changes a lot cleaner, a lot simpler and uh, perhaps not as uh, foreboding, but uh, gonna get it done. This is a six mil pipe. You can only suction it out if your dipstick tube is uh, six mil or more. Um, if it's more or less, I guess you would need a different tube, but um, that's about it. So we've warmed the oil up and we're about to take the dipstick out, put this tube in all the way to the bottom of the sump, and then we're in a position to start draining out the old oil. So I can't only share the successes, I'm afraid I have to share the failures, but uh, maybe this pipe is too short, but for whatever reason it's not picking up the oil. So. Um, going to have to revert back to the old get under the car with the 17 mil spanner and get the oil out. So I've put it on the car ramp, so all I've done is put that uh, M19 ammo can underneath the diff so that if uh, it does collapse I've got time to get out but don't ever work on a car without using axle stands or some sort of prop underneath. You know, uh, too many times it's ended up fatal. So here's the draining plug, just going to undo the draining plug, put a container underneath it, drain out the oil. Here's our draining plug for our engine oil, it's in the sump underneath the car, sometimes on the back, sometimes on the side. Let's get a spanner on that and get it, get it out. So I've just loosened off the oil filter with a wrench, but that just uh, hand tight and so um, when we ease that off it's going to be full of engine oil so just be careful when you uh, take it away, have a bucket or something ready to put it in. But what we want to do is turn that out to see if there are any metal filings or anything in the filter. Gives us a good indication as to how our engine is doing. Uh, this engine has only done 7,142 miles since I changed the engine, so I'm expecting that to be super duper clean. So here's my new oil filter. Um, this is uh, Bearmark. I use kind of Bearmark parts. Uh, I tend to buy not the very best, but not the very worst. Uh, I think this is a good middle of the road product. Uh, the other thing that you need is you need a new uh, collapsing washer for your sump plug. Uh, it's pretty important that you change it when you do the oil. If you don't, all you get is a very slow sort of drip, drip, drip leak. So it's a copper or brass uh, collapsing washer. Just means as you do it up, so the metal physically collapses, gives you a greater seal. But um, oil filter comes with this kind of cellophane, so you can't get any um, debris in it. It comes with a seal. Uh, it's got this rubber uh, seal, just a bit of engine oil to lubricate it before you put it on. Remember to change the uh, sump collapsing washer, and that's that part of the job pretty much done. So same old, same old, new oil filter. 
going to put on today's date, which is the 21st of January. We're also going to write the mileage on it. Okay, so in with the new. I'll get this first uh, four litres in and then I'll uh, start the engine and run it off the jacks and then just top it up. Just uh, a kind of top tip, not from a mechanic, but from someone that's had uh, Discovery Ones for about eight years now. Uh, when you change the oil and kind of fill it up on the dipstick, don't fill it to the full marker, you know. So um, here you can see you've got your kind of full marker. Try and fill it up to halfway between, halfway between kind of low and full. Um, otherwise, I think. I've found that if you fill it up all the way, all it does is it just burns oil. So um, that's my two penneth, uh, take it or leave it, but that's where I'll be topping it up to. Now it's cold, flat and on the floor. Just a good opportunity to check everything else while you're under the bonnet. So there's my uh, steering fluid, going to check the uh, window washer bottle, going to change the air filter and I'm going to be going over there to change the fuel filter and that's going to be my so a little B service really. I've only done 7,142 miles since I changed the engine but um, should really have left it at least another thousand miles but I've got a lazy Sunday afternoon on my hands and thought what better way to uh, while it away than uh, just stand on top of the truck. These things really only have to be done up hand tight so run it, make sure you haven't got any leaks. Really that should be it. So, uh, not the dirtiest air filter in the world, but I'm sure we'll uh, benefit from putting the clean one in. So there we can see the difference between the dirty one and the okay, clean one. Okay, that's the air filter changed, sorted, just on four clips, really straightforward. Okay, last thing to do then is just have a good look around for any leaks. What I've done is I've moved the car, so um, uh, you'll see a leak on the, on the clean, dry concrete underneath the vehicle. but. Um, can't see anything obvious, that's the uh, oil filter, oil and the fuel filter change, we put a new air filter in, that's kind of routine, B service, um, 8 to 12,000 miles is, is how often I like to um, uh, change the uh, bits and pieces in this car, but um, that's it really, that's my little afternoon. Well, I can't see any leaks. sounding rather sweet if I say so myself. This is my um, spare box. So today I've used a servicing kit which is um, uh, an oil filter, fuel filter and an air filter and the engine oil. Um, what I've got in here really is kind of uh, disposable. So I've got um, wheel bearings, I've got a full set of uh, brakes front and rear. I'm going to order up another servicing kit but really this is me um, you know, maintaining my own vehicle, learning about it. You know, I, like a lot of people, do take my car to the garage to be repaired, but on the odd occasion that I haven't got £300, you know, so uh, just the value added tax to have the car serviced is 75 quid. The mechanic's going to be 35 to £55 an hour, so probably going to come to somewhere near £300 time the job's done. What I've done today is I've done a, you know, granted a very basic service on the car, but it's cost me about, um, about 35 to 45 pounds, and that is all in. And obviously, 
um, the tax alone for taking it to the garage would be uh, almost double that. So this box, I buy parts for my vehicle, um, um, disposables, routine service items, and anything that I think is on its way out or uh, is a bit of a bargain, I buy, put in this box, and I put it to one side. And uh, that is just spare parts. Uh, I've got another box with, with uh, vehicle specific tools in it, you know, so sometimes you need a special tool to do a job on a car. So I've got another box where I've bought uh, special tools which make uh, maintaining and servicing my truck just a little bit more straightforward. Okay, so we we'll just uh, have a little chat while I get washed up. That was me uh, doing a kind of routine service on the car. I managed to get underneath it and have a look, make sure there's, you know, no. Uh, no leaks, no damage, you know, we're going into this uh, little winter snap. I'm still convinced that we're going to have a real bite of cold weather, might even have some more snow. So I've really serviced the car 800 miles probably before it was due, but um, I've got a bit of time on my hands this weekend, so I thought I'd kind of get it out of the way. That's that little job uh, kind of over and done with anyway. I've yet to sort of drive it around the block and give it a bit of a test to make sure it's okay. But um, I've left it running for a while, couldn't see any leaks. So um, I think that's kind of all good. Um, winter checks, you know, so um, prep your vehicle for winter. What I've done is I've changed the oil filter, the fuel filter, the air filter. I've changed the oil. Um, I've uh, spam checked the underneath to make sure there's any uh, nothing sort of catastrophic and leaking. I um, replaced the bulbs, some of the bulbs for LEDs recently that you've um, seen. My tyres are uh, Cooper All Terrain tyres. They're sort of 60 40 road off road, and um, they're all looking good. I've checked the tyre pressures, all of my lights work, and that's really my kind of winter routine maintenance. Um, I'm going to order in another servicing kit. And that will go in the uh, parts box along with the bits and pieces that I've already got. But um, really, I just wanted to sort of respond, I suppose, to a comment. You know, I got a comment from a chap who sort of said, "Oh, you know, I'd love you to sort of stop going down to uh, Church Farm and um, uh, glamping, you know, and having a big cook up in the woods <laughs> and uh, get back to prepping." Um, and I was a bit puzzled by it because, um, to me. Um, that's exactly what prepping is, you know, so what I'm doing is I'm maintaining my own vehicle. So regardless of what happens around me, I can maintain that truck and I can get places. Um, my long-term storage, I've still got dehydrated and dried foods. We've got three months of uh, emergency food in the house. Half of it is in the house, half of it is in the trailer, kind of ready to go. I've got 10 gallons of diesel, uh, 10 gallons of water in the trailer. And I've got 10 gallons of diesel and 10 gallons of water in cans in the garage, kind of ready to rock and roll. So that's my kind of preps, my, that's my preparedness. Um, in the UK, most major disasters have concluded themselves within three months. And um, that's the reason for uh, the amount of um, food and fuel that I carry as a kind of prepper. But... Um, when we go to uh, Church Farm, um, Church Farm is a place where they slaughter their own um, livestock every two weeks. So that's a place, regardless of what goes on around me, I know I can go and get fresh meat. Uh, and it's an organic farm, you know, so um, again, it's somewhere I know I can go to get fresh fruit and vegetables. Um, if it all come on top, I have a relationship with the people that own the farm and I think I could trade my labour and uh, security knowledge for um, food and provisions for my family in the kind of medium to long term. So that's why I built a relationship with that place. But when I go there, what I'm doing is I am practising living off grid. I'm practising living without electricity without gas, without heat, without light, without running water. And I'm also deliberately cooking quite 
big hearty meals. Now, I have no intention of evacuating my home, you know, unless I absolutely have to. The only reason I'm leaving home is because it's five foot deep in water, you know, and I cannot stay here. But if the electricity went off, I wouldn't be leaving my home. If the gas went off, I wouldn't be leaving my home. You know, I've got a generator that I'm gonna I'm gonna rig up. Um, we have a wood pile, so I'll put a wood burning. Uh, maybe the potbelly stove in the fireplace uh, and spark that up and it'll go straight up the chimney. I'll shut the door and we will have one nice peachy warm room that the family can live in. Um, I show you constantly, it's not the end of the world to be able to strike up a fire pit and cook a, a, a hearty meal off grid. So, so every time I go somewhere local camping, you know, I'm loading up the vehicle, I am in my head evacuating my home, and I'm living off grid. I'm living off grid with no electricity, no running water, no gas, no amenities. And um, anyone that's watched the channel will know that I absolutely thrive when I'm out there, as does anybody that comes with me, you know. So, um, so if I'm missing something, please somebody flag it up and tell me. But I think that kind of what I'm about on my little channel is still prepping. I'm not preparing for a meteor to come out of space, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to be um, probably done like everybody else. I'm kind of preparing for, you know, um, uh, a local um, catastrophe, you know. Uh, so we don't have any electricity for a couple of weeks, for example. Um, I'm preparing for my wife to be made long-term unemployed, so we got three months to find jobs to support the family where we haven't got to um, go out and spend every penny we've got. You know, in very poor, run-down communities, today's wages is today's food. You know, so that's why wherever you look in the world where there's a man-made disaster or uh, a kind of natural catastrophe, within 72 hours people are looting shops. Because what you're going to do, you're not going to live above a supermarket and watch your kids starve. You know, it, it, it just ain't going to happen. So the poorer the, the community is, the faster and more desperate people become. And I think that's where we end up with, with people... Um, kind of looting shops and um, the breakdown of law and order and all the rest of it, you know. So uh, I think I'm still about prepping. What I've done is kind of um, familiarised myself with the truck that I'm driving. Um, I maintain it myself so that I am not dependent on, you know, the local facilities uh, in my local area. And uh, in my head, I am still a prepper. <laughs> so, so thanks for coming along on this little film um, just wanted to get that off my chest uh, this is where I say um, please thumbs up, share, like, subscribe and uh, if you're watching on Facebook please follow I'm going to get washed up so as always, any comments love to hear them back soon